I believe they were on to something, but I believe that the truth has been revealed through the Christ. And I love philosophy. I don't think that the Bible teaches that you can't do philosophy at all. I think what Paul, the Apostle Paul is trying to wear is, Beware of vain philosophies that oppose the truth of the Christian God. Uh, any philosophies that who, that is in perpetuation with his divine glory, this is good academia, right? This is good academia, right? Oh shit, yeah, it's good academia. Uh, this is the way the first university started, by the way, in the United States. Sorry. Um, anyway. I think by that particular comment, he just means that it was a Christian university. You know, in the past, we pretty much just had religions that had institutions where they would teach people to read uh, because they wanted people to read their holy book and be a Christian and all this other stuff. It makes total sense that the first university would have been like some kind of Christian institution. But still, the fact is, is that education is not a Christian invention. <laughs> <laughs> so basically on that um evolution would undermine the laws of logic as being binding and you know ev evolutionists like to go logic logic oh yes logic and reason wow the problem is there is no logic or reason in that situation because your logic is purely relative it's there's nothing they can get binding it's meant merely for survival and procreation, not necessarily for transcendent truth at all, and your reason can't be trusted because your mind is basically a cosmic accident that, again, is, is you know, random particles only for procreation and not survival. Wow. Have you ever noticed random particles running into each other and, like, their dicks slamming into the vaginas of the other particles? See that shit all the time. I'm gonna make love to you. Particles so, for one thing, he's making a classic apologist mistake here, I guess maybe Christian mistake, is he's mixing up various scientific theories into one sort of mix of shit that he thinks represents science. And that's what he's doing, because he's mixing up the origins of the universe, the origins of life, and then evolution. He's mixing those three things up. Evolution is very specific and does not entail the creation of the universe or formation of life. So there's no way you can trust your own thoughts. Uh, Darwin recognized that. He even wrote about his skepticism and the problems with that. C.S. Lewis mentioned it. I believe G.K. Chesterton mentioned it. And Dr. Alvin Plantinga, one of the most, most famous philosophers in the world, Christian philosopher who ascribes to some evolutionary theories I don't agree with. But he created a really good argument card, the uh, evolutionary argument against naturalism, which is a very good argument. Okay. So I know I don't know about the other guys, but I do know that Darwin did talk about how the human brain evolved, then there's no way that we can trust it as being able to give us absolute truth, which you would think by the time that Darwin was doing his thing, that would have been pretty fucking obvious. I mean, by the time Darwin was doing his thing in the late 1800s, I mean, you had the, the Protestant Re Reformation where you had Christians killing other Christians and a hundred years before Darwin, you had the American Revolution where they were separating from, from England and that was Christians that were fighting other Christians for the, their freedom to practice their own particular religion in the way that they want. And it's the idea is that if the mind evolved itself, that the mind can't trust itself for the same reason that the laws of logic are no longer bind, binding. You undermine the laws of nature. Okay, Laws of nature imply a lawgiver. Uh, in the Middle Ages, well, I'm sorry, the philosophers of science hearkening back to the earlier periods of science like Galileo and Newton uh, and Kepler referred to this as Whitehead's thesis. And that's that the, uh, the reason that science developed more in the Western hemisphere than it is in the Far Eastern cultures is because of the religious systems. In the East, you have sort of a, a lot of Taoist, Buddhist, uh, mystical uh, type of stuff that does not necessarily assume a divine law giver. Whereas to in the medieval tradition and the Western European tra uh, traditions, it does. So the bottom line is men, the, the, the statement is paraphrased, men became scientific in the West. See, technology developed pretty well over in the East. Technology, techne, Greek things with the hands, gadgets, inventions, that's fine. But the idea of looking for divine truth in nature, laws, natural laws, the laws of nature, only came because men were Christians. Men did believe in a divine lawgiver, and they believed that a, a divine lawgiver of moral law would probably also had physical laws. So these natural philosophers, if you will, became looking for these natural laws based on their belief in a divine lawgiver who made the moral law, the divine law, the biblical law, and started seeking out natural law. And lo and behold, they found it. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 This is all shit. 
like history right here because the idea of the laws of nature and the philosophy of these laws of nature reach all the way back to ancient Greece. It doesn't make sense that you're saying that the first people to want to look for these natural laws were only Christians. When obviously prior to that point, you had people that were recognizing these natural laws way, way, way before Christianity ever was a thought in anybody's head. But that law of nature as a regularity, a law of nature can only be based in a uh, theistic worldview. It cannot be, it's not sustainable in an evolutionary worldview. Uh-huh, get out of here. Outside of a, rel a relativity. Go on. I don't believe it. So laws of logic, laws of nature, both undermined by hard evolutionary um, philosophy, psychology. You don't say. And, and I want to say biology, but the problem is biology is a legit form of science. Really? Get out of here. And evolution is uh, occult doctrine of becoming. Go! I don't believe it. It's meta uh, metaphysical speculation. It's basically alchemical dogma. You don't say. Get out of here. Uh, it's not science, guys. I told you that bitch crazy. It is science. There's a scientific theory of evolution. And evolution has so much evidence behind it, scientific evidence, that it's a fucking fact. Okay? It's a fact of reality that evolution happens, that life changes in response to its environment. You're just simply repeating throughout this entire fucking video. Evolution undermines reality. Evolution undermines logic. And evolution undermines this and that. But you're not actually connecting these ideas to any kind of evidence that they're correct. And I'm guessing it's because you have the Bible that is your standard. And so you're judging evolution evolution and other scientific theories by the Bible. For instance, I don't think that you can really sufficiently explain starlight and how far away stars are and shit and on a creationist worldview. They have some people that are trying to explain it, but all of their explanations are shit. Just like this guy's argument. They're fucking shit. You like, you just don't believe in science. You can't define science when you can show up and take that pet ape. I'll take my pet ape farmer wife and she'll go up and knock God off his throne with her big fat ass. You don't even know my wife. Yeah, thank God. My guess is, is that you wouldn't even know science if it smacked you in the face, though. Oh! 